Presenting the Coley Award to our other two recipients is Dr. Jed Walchuk. How you doing? Awesome. Dr. Walchuk is an associate director of the CRI Scientific Advisory Council and director of the Cancer Vaccine Collaborative. You're like, what the heck is the can Cancer Vaccine Collaborative? They conduct trials of promising cancer immunotherapies under the joint auspices of the CRI and its partner in this program, the Ludwig Institute for Cancer Research, which Dr. Walchuk is an associate member. He's also an associate attending physician and director of immunotherapy clinical trials at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center. Dr. Walchuk played an instrumental role in the clinical development and eventual FDA approval. We talked about it, you know about it, you know what ward it won, the anti-CTLA-4 antibody. Hey! That blockade therapy for people with advanced melanoma that has initiated several clinical trials using plasmid DNA vaccines for the treatment of melanoma. But here's what many of you don't know, uh, is that his work extends far beyond people. Several years ago, his DNA vaccine was approved by the U.S. Department of Agriculture for the treatment of melanoma in dogs, believe it or not, which accounts for up to 40% of tumors in canines. Uh, and like most brilliant scientists, which I'm learning tonight, he's a music man, plays the tuba, the largest of the brass instruments. <laughs> Who can Wikipedia the tuba? And apparently he's also the current world record holder in multitasking. I'm told he can send three emails from three devices in three different locations simultaneously. <laughs> Nicely done. Please join me in welcoming not only a leading cancer physician, but also man's best friend, best friend, Dr. Jed Walchuk. Thank you very much. I'm not going to blow my own horn up here. Um, <laughs> But, but I will say that they did take the lids off the boxes because despite all my titles, I can't be trusted to open them correctly. But it, it's, it's really an, uh, a great pleasure to present the 2012 William B. Coley Award for Distinguished Research in Tumor Immunology to two of my most esteemed colleagues, Dr. Carl June and Dr. Michelle Satellane, for their groundbreaking work on the development of chimeric antigen receptors, or CAR, T-cell therapy for cancer. CAR T-cells are T-cells that are taken from a patient and genetically engineered in the laboratory to express a receptor composed of two elements, a part on the outside that can bind to a molecule on the surface of the tumor cell, and a part on the inside that turns on the T-cell. Uh, in this way, the CAR is designed to bring the T-cell into contact with the cancer cell that it's meant to recognize and activate it to kill it. The idea of using CAR T-cell therapy to treat cancer is not new. It's been around since the late 1980s, but early efforts to translate the strategy into the clinic met with some significant hurdles. Recently, however, CAR T-cell therapy has begun to achieve some quite remarkable results in patients with leukemia, and efforts are underway to extend this approach to other cancers, including brain, lung, pancreatic, and prostate cancer. Carl and Michelle's work has been critical in paving the way for these successes. Over the past two decades, they have pioneered many of the new approaches and techniques to optimize CAR T-cell therapy. When there were only inefficient methods to isolate and expand T-cells with the best therapeutic properties, Carl created a new method to prime T-cells using special magnetic beads coated with antibodies specific to two T-cell stimulatory molecules, CD3 and CD28, which were able to produce multifunctional T-cells with a higher potential to proliferate. When clinical trials of the first CAR T-cells were disappointing and showed that the CAR T-cells died shortly after infusion, Michelle, who I'm proud to call a colleague at Memorial Sloan Kettering here in New York, developed the first, quote, second generation CARs with additional co-stimulatory components which helped to improve the anti-tumor activity of the T-cells. And where the process to make CARs was complicated and time-consuming, Michelle developed a validated approach to generate second-generation CARs rapidly and consistently, consistently for use in the clinic. And last year, we all became aware that this effort had started to pay off. In a trial led by Carl June at the University of Pennsylvania, CAR, CAR T-cell therapy achieved dramatic results in three patients with chronic lymphocytic leukemia, or CLL. 
These were patients who had undergone multiple rounds of chemotherapy and had exhausted all of their standard treatment options. One of them had a partial response to the treatment, and two of them had complete remissions. And they're still cancer-free today more than two years later. Before, CAR T cells would fail to proliferate and kill cancer cells and showed little success in treating patients. Now, with new technologies pioneered by him and Michelle, Carl succeeded in producing serial killer T cells that could kill between 1,000 and 100,000 tumor cells each and turned an incurable cancer into one that was essentially cured for two patients. And I know from some of his recent talks that those numbers are on their way up. More recently, Michelle has achieved similar results in patients with another form of leukemia. His results haven't been published yet, but when they are, we hope to see the story on the front page of the New York Times science section, just like Carl's was last year. These positive outcomes and the many more that I'm sure are to follow are the result of the decades of work that were done by Carl, Michelle, and many others with the belief that this type of immunotherapy had the potential to save patients' lives and the intellect, skill, and persistence to see that potential was realized. For their groundbreaking work to develop, optimize, and realize more fully the potential of chimeric antigen receptor or CAR T cell therapy to treat cancer, I'm very pleased to present the 2012 Coley Award for Distinguished Research in Tumor Immunology to Drs. Carl June and Michelle Satellane. Carl, would you come up first to accept your award? Well, to, to continue on the, uh, the musical theme, um, I play the cello and uh, don't have the brass balls it takes to play the tuba. <laughs> so, um, um, but I can't think of a more appropriate way to share in this prize I'm with Michelle Satellane. We've worked together on this for almost two decades to make this happen. And to simplify it, what we have is cells that are genetically modified and, and, and Michelle's lab worked out how the gene to put it in, and we worked out how to grow the cells, and you have to put those two together to make this work. And um, my own journey in that started over 20 years ago when Bruce Levine joined my lab, and we worked out these paramagnetic beads to make the cells divide. And Michelle's been working that long to make the genes that make the cells turn into serial killer cells. So I can tell you that the first three patients that we you know, reported have done very well, and uh, fortunately, they, no one who's had a complete response now uh, has relapsed, and we now have two children in the same situation, two out of two kids with acute leukemia. So we're up to 12 patients now. Uh, it was announced in July that Novartis now has licensed this, and that's, a, I think, a tide, or tip, probably a tipping point that the pharmaceutical industry would actually begin to think about gene therapy, because before it was not done. Uh, it wasn't even on the radar screen. We began here with funding from, um, in our case, both Michelle and I got funding from the Alliance for Cancer Gene Therapy. The, the National Cancer Institute would not fund it. It was too far out there. So it was funded by philanthropy, and I think that's a big message is that philanthropy is what's gotten us to where it is. Um, so I want to thank Jill, the CRA, and uh, um, you know my colleagues who have made this. We use the findings from basic science in order to make this a translational thing work here. Um, our big hope over the next five years is that we can move it beyond leukemia into solid, the more common solid tumors like lung cancer, breast cancer, and ovarian cancer. So on behalf of many people, I'd like to, I'm very grateful to accept this award. Thank you. And now I'd like to invite Dr. Michelle Satellane to the podium. Thank you, Jed, for this uh, very kind introduction. It's a, it's a great honor and really a big thrill <clears throat> to receive uh, the Coley Award from the Cancer Research Institute. It's an equally big pleasure to share it uh, with a friend and colleague, uh, Carl June, who just spoke before. Uh, when our body is uh, under attack from viruses, our immune system mounts a, a rapid response task force, uh, largely composed of T lymphocytes to identify and then repel the, the invader. And struck by this, uh, while I was in graduate school, uh, I fantasized that it might be possible to instruct T cells to do the same thing to fight cancer. 
So as a postdoctoral fellow, I went to MIT to learn the then um, <clears throat> rudimentary principles of gene transfer biology and wanting to apply that to uh, T cells. And it took about five years or so before we were able to successfully uh, reprogram human T cells through gene transfer. Having done that, as soon as I came to Sloan Kettering about 15 years ago now, uh, <clears throat> I opened my laboratory and started focusing on instructing T cells to seek out and recognize cancer cells. Uh, there had been uh, some efforts in the literature before, but they, were, uh, they just didn't uh, hold the road. <clears throat> As Jed said, and, and Carl as well, uh, we needed to build a new kind of receptors that would not just target the T cells against the cancer, but also provide greater potency and persistence to these T cells. So this new class of receptors that we called chimeric antigen receptors um, <clears throat> were um, designed to um, both target the tumor uh, enable the T cells to destroy the tumor despite interference from other cells that surround and protect the tumor and allow these T cells to, per to persist long enough uh, to, to get the job done. In the last five years, several trials have opened now using this technology. Uh, the most spectacular result perhaps uh, achieved uh, for, to date uh, by my friend Carl uh, in chronic lymphocytic leukemia. I'm pleased to say that at Memorial, we also have, uh, as of yet, unpublished, uh, very um, promising and also dramatic results in another disease uh, called adult uh, lymphoblastic uh, leukemia. The next challenge now is to figure out how to get these uh, sort of new age coles toxins to work uh, in solid tumors. I'm very thankful to the CRI for this award and for this support, uh, and I'm also proud that uh, our dream team application is amongst the, the four finalists uh, for the uh, Stand Up uh, to Cancer Challenge that is supported uh, in large part by the Cancer Research Institute. And before finishing, I want to, of course, acknowledge the many people who've worked with me you never do this all by yourself. And at Sloan Kettering, there are two in particular that I want to acknowledge. <clears throat> Uh, one is Dr. Rainier Brentjens, who, who couldn't be here tonight. He's in Japan actually presenting our, our new leukemia results. And the other one is Dr. Isabel Riviere, who's the director of our cell therapy facility at Sloan Kettering, which is really an outstanding operation. And she is here in the audience tonight. And without her, we couldn't do any of this. Um, finally, I'd like to acknowledge my mother, who is, in the, who is one of my, uh, my longest term uh, <coughs> in source of inspiration and um, severe critique, but also supporter, who is uh, in the audience tonight. So anyway, as you can tell, it's a big thrill for me to accept uh, this award tonight. Thank you.